Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're making two of my favorite dips, one of them being salsa. I typically make this with a giant can of diced tomatoes. That was not available at Walmart. Um, by the way, a giant can means, I believe this is a 28 ounce can. You can use two 15 ounce cans as well, um, or one if you want to reduce it, but I just like having a lot. So Walmart only had these peeled whole tomatoes, and I was like, sure, that's the same thing. Let me try that. Um, if you prefer, you could also use five to six Roma tomatoes and just um, cut out the insides. I don't know what the insides are called. My friend gave me a couple of Roma tomatoes, so I'm going to use one to add to the canned tomatoes in this salsa recipe. You're going to want to cut the fleshy interior out. Make sure there's no seeds and that squishy pulpy stuff is gone. And then dice the tomatoes. One of the few things you actually need a serrated knife for is cutting tomatoes. I don't know why they don't cut very well with straight edges. The Cutco trimmer works very well on tomatoes. You can get one on eBay. I swear, even though I sold Cutco in college, I don't think you need to buy it from the manufacturer. They are crazy expensive. And there's tons of them available on eBay all the time. Or if there's a different serrated knife that you like, let me know in the comments because I am all for finding a different brand. I know Cutco is not for everyone. They turned into an MLM in the last 10 years. Um, and so that's not something a lot of people want to buy, even if they get it secondhand. You will want to mince one clove of garlic as well. So it was around this time that I thought to myself, I should check the inside of these canned whole tomatoes since I've never bought whole tomatoes before and I have no idea if there's seeds inside. And there were. So it took um, several minutes to slice all of the peeled canned tomatoes and remove the seeds. Um, I'm trying to think if whether or not that even mattered. Uh, since I do use a food processor for this, maybe the seeds would not have been that big of a deal, but I'm still glad I removed them. If the can of whole peeled tomatoes is all that's available as far as canned tomatoes go, um, I would say just splurge and get the Roma tomatoes from the produce section. The first time I made this recipe, I used Roma tomatoes and it was very good. And then I began using canned because I didn't notice that much of a difference in taste or texture. And I like, I will, I will literally choose any shelf stable option over fresh options for me just because I'm the only one eating the food I cook. So it takes a while to go through it. Next, you're going to cut a quarter cup of an onion. I, I don't know how to measure a quarter cup of an onion, so I typically just cut off a quarter of the onion that I have. I don't think um, a slight difference in quantity matters very much in this recipe. In a pinch, when I don't have an onion, I do use onion powder, and I typically do a tablespoon. My food processor does not like to cut the onions very small. Other stuff it will, but not onions I've noticed. So I try to get mine as small as I want them to be. And I have this thing with raw onions where I don't like to eat it. 
it does not really agree with me. So I'll make them as small as possible when I'm chopping by hand. The next thing you're going to want to do is add some cilantro. Even if you're like me and you hate cilantro, it, um, it will be good if you add just a bit. I do one teaspoon of cilantro paste and I keep the paste in the freezer in that little container because it actually does not go bad. Then a tablespoon of lime juice or lemon juice. Since I always have lemon juice in the house, that's what I use. You're going to add cayenne to taste. And then one thing you could add is a pinch of salt, but I never do because I don't really think it makes much difference. I'm adding Louisiana hot sauce, but ideally you would want to add Mexican liquid spices. The recipe also calls for a teaspoon of salt, but I might have missed that. Then spoon it into your food processor. If you don't have a food processor, my best advice for making this recipe is to just get the Roma tomatoes and dice them up really small. Or there is a can of petite diced tomatoes you could find. And my guess is you won't have to actually cut up too much um, with that size. Consistency will be up to your personal preference. Um, if you're using a can of tomatoes, do make sure you drain them first, otherwise it will be quite soupy. And um, if you want it chunkier, then maybe either don't do the food processor or don't run it as long as I do. I think if you want it chunkier, you should go for the Roma tomatoes because they aren't as soft as the canned tomatoes. I don't know what kind of tomatoes are in canned tomatoes, or what they do to them to make them that soft. But I definitely prefer canned. taste test was a success and this freezes very well. I popped it right in the freezer because I'm making guacamole next. All right, if you want to fold a potato chip bag closed and you don't have a clip, or if you just like learning new things like me, start by putting the first, the two corners down, whatever direction, and then fold it a couple of times, turn it around, Make new corners, same direction as before because you've turned the bag around. And then fold it over and sort of twist it inside out. And then fold it outside. Fold the corners down and then fold the bag down two or three times. Turn the bag around so now the opening of the flap is facing you and make new corners going the same direction. Then turn the top of it inside out. So this is Serious Eats recipe for what I believe they call their basic guacamole. Mm, basic. That was probably bad. Sorry, that was my basic bitch voice, but I have out of practice. It calls for one small yellow onion. I don't buy yellow onions. I just buy white. That makes things a lot easier for me. So I'm doing a quarter of a whole white onion, and I am mincing, or I'll actually dicing it up.
The recipe then calls for one serrano chili, but I am substituting some jalapenos that we already had just because we already had it. So I am taking, um, I would say maybe eight jalapeno slices out and I'm going to mince them and add them to the bowl with the onions. The recipe then calls for two tablespoons of lime juice, but I don't have quite the number of avocados as the recipe calls for, so I'm only doing one tablespoon of lime juice or lemon juice. Of course, you'll notice I didn't substitute anything else or um, not substitute, I didn't reduce anything else as far as the quantity goes and the ratios. Um, I don't know why I decided to do that for the lemon juice and nothing else. Guacamole is one of those things that's pretty forgi forgiving if you do the wrong sizes. Then it asks for a half cup of picked cilantro leaves. I thought two teaspoons was fine since I'm not a fan of cilantro. And then it says two teaspoons of salt, but I just did one because I have fewer avocados. The original recipe calls for four large avocados, and I bought two. And the other thing is, like... How do you know it's large? It looked like it was the medium-sized ones, but I'm not really sure. Maybe I haven't seen an avocado in a while. Blend everything really well. Kind of pulverize it in your food processor. And then you're going to start with the avocados. So you know how everyone makes jokes about how you can't tell when an avocado is ripe and an avocado is only ripe for three seconds? Um, this is what it looks like when it's ripe, guys. The, the skin whatever the outside's called, will be kind of brownish, kind of greenish, but a little bit brown. And um, a knife will go into it pretty easily. And then the inside will look like that. Um, I've, never, I've never had avocados actually go bad. I think I just am too eager to eat them so they don't have a chance to go bad. And I can tell based on the outside how quick they're going to be ready to eat. slippy with a knife and you don't want to risk cutting yourself trying to hack a knife into the seed, just push on the outside like I did. It'll come off. You could also try using a spoon and it comes out pretty easily too. Then mash it thoroughly with a whisk or fork. Then add the contents from the food processor. It should be fairly pasty according to the original recipe. A paste should be formed. And then you're going to mix it up. The recipe does say fold. Um, I don't think it matters that much in this particular thing. Folding, I think, is more if you don't want to incorporate the ingredients all that well. But I think for guacamole, you do want them all pretty well incorporated. So I'm mixing with a spoon until they're thoroughly mixed. The recipe then says season as desired once mixed. So I'm going to add some cayenne powder to taste. So a couple of tips for keeping guacamole from going brown. Oh, but first I did add the last Roma tomato to this. Guacamole sometimes has tomatoes in it. Um, I don't know what is like traditional with Mexican cuisine, if the tomatoes are authentic or not. But I decided to try it with the tomatoes, the Roma tomatoes from this extra one. 
because I do like it that way. I just don't make it that way myself um, because it involves extra ingredients and it's good without it. But I added the tomatoes and it was pretty good with the tomatoes for sure. Um, so I was going to say one trick to keeping your, uh, your guacamole from going brown too fast is to add lime juice or lemon juice to it. You could throw a little extra on and mix it and that should keep it from going brown right away. Um, another trick is to cover it with a thin layer of water. Um, that just means put the water into the container without like sloshing it everywhere. Just gently put the water in, otherwise you're making a big hole in your guacamole and that doesn't really solve the problem. The last option is to take foil or saran wrap or something solid like that and just press it directly onto the guacamole, uh, the top layer and make sure the sides of it are completely sealed so there's no oxygen getting in. I find that it doesn't taste any different when it's slightly brown, so you kind of have to just psychologically psych yourself into eating the brown guacamole. And for me, I like guacamole so much that it doesn't matter. Um, this bowl lasted two days. I think my husband had five chips with guacamole, and I had all of the rest because I am a guacamole fiend. So it didn't get very brown for sure. And um, when it did, there he is having his, his chips. When it did, I, um, you know, I just scraped off a layer and, and then it was good. Go ahead and like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I'll be back soon with another great recipe. Thank you.